Hi there, everyone, and welcome into the Sun Devil Source Post Game Show. Chris Cartman and Blake Neiman here with you. After Arizona State's 79 to 61 victory over Oregon State, Sun Devils now improved to 13 and 12 overall, get back over 500, and are 7 and 7 in Pac-12 play. Chris, Sun Devils were able to really have a second half scoring scoring spree, outscoring the Beavers 46 to 28 in the second half, and that pushed them to a blowout win. Yeah, uh, they. Played a really good half of basketball. First half, not bad. Shot the ball well, but it was tied. Second half, they exploded. I felt like um, Oregon State Bildo, uh, he didn't get nearly as many uh, touches around the basket. Um, ASU did a really good job of sharing the basketball. Uh, fast break points, they dominated in that category. They had over 40 points in the paint. Um, when you get the ball inside and then you're, you're a lot of the rotations that led to open wide open three point shots They just played a very good style of basketball overall Oregon State's a bad team look they they've won one road game in uh, almost three seasons none this year So this is what should happen, but ASU was blown out and frankly embarrassed uh, just three weeks ago maybe mm -hmm. up in Corvallis and and um, but ASU definitely uh, playing some of its best basketball this season over the last couple of games, two, three games. Talking about playing some of their best basketball, having their best shooting performance since the first four game overall um, from last season against Nevada, um, and then having a previous great game against Utah. Um, Adam Miller kind of talked about it, how this team is honing in on their offensive identity a little bit, and they're starting to take some strides. You have it, these guys who are alpha basketball players. They've they've always had the ball in their hands. Jose Perez, Adam Miller, uh, Jemiah Neal, even though he's somebody who's come off the bench primarily throughout his career, uh, he likes to handle the ball and get it up on the rim. And uh, Frankie Collins is a point guard. He's got the ball in his hands a lot always. So it's just taken a while for these guys to kind of gel and get everything together. You see it pretty clearly. Bobby Hurley's preached this the message and how he wants them to play throughout the season, but it hasn't really settled in on them to the degree that it needed to earlier on in the year. But you saw tonight the ball didn't stick at all, moved very well. They um, When they get into transition, they're a pretty dangerous and exciting team. Um, the more that half court structures are forced upon them, the more they struggle. So this was a this was a really good uh, performance for them overall, uh, and against an inferior opponent that they should beat um, at home in that kind of a way. Frankie Collins, Jose Perez, Adam Miller, and Jemiah Neal all with over 14 points tonight. But Neal leading the way with 21 points, his first time coming off the bench this season. He took it really well. We've seen Bobby Hurley doing a trend over the recent games. Adam Miller sat and then had a solid game. Jose Perez sat, had a solid game. Starting to form this trend of selflessness among the team, and it's really starting to grow. Team buy-in, um, and it followed... Jose Perez getting in trouble and not playing this, the second half the last few games. Okay, everybody's kind of getting on the same page and understanding. They all want to win, but we have to play together in order to make that happen. And definitely, uh, Jemiah Neal tonight uh, attacking the rim, straight line drives, two really neat layups where he was kind of, you know, doing some windmill type weird stuff with his hands. Um, and uh, also, you know, shooting the ball well from the perimeter. Um, hit, hit an important three. Um, I just, uh, the, the, the comfort that you're seeing from the guys on the floor in this game compared to kind of what they've been throughout the season, night and day, and that's uh, why they had their best shooting percentage performance since uh, 2019 playing against Washington. They, they were over 60% in the second half alone tonight, Like. Yeah, very impressive shooting by the Sun Devils tonight, but it's going to be tough to be able to keep that up against an opponent like Arizona down in Tucson. Remember what happened last year for the Sun Devils, got lucky at the buzzer with a Desmond Cambridge heave from beyond half court, but it's going to be very difficult to pull off something like that again. Well, look, that, that was a game that I don't think anybody really expected ASU to go out and win, even though ASU was a, a better team than this year. You never know what's going to happen. I'm interested to see uh, how the matchup unfolds. ASU has some size and but mobility with its size like Gaffney has the ability to pull out uh, Arizona's bigs and, and maybe create some mismatch opportunities they're, they're, they're generating turnovers and they're getting the ball kind of downhill and they're gonna have to do that and avoid those uh, catastrophic runs that Arizona tends to inflict on its opponents it's a difficult matchup but the way that they've played over their last three games you have to think that uh, they can make it competitive and who knows what happens late in games uh, when you have a chance as they showed last year and especially in this unique year of the Pac-12 conference heck 
Oregon State beat Arizona at the buzzer a few yeah. weeks ago. So anything can happen. All all bets are off. And Sun Devils on a two-game win streak trying to carry that momentum down to Tucson. Chris, thanks for your insight. Um, we're going to be signing off here from DFA. Sun Devils win it 79-61. to We'll see you next time.